sorry about that. Um, I was trying to rinse my mouth before I spoke because I just ate. <coughs> so we're gonna um, today we are going to react to um. Contraltos and the Mezzo Sopranos, Once Upon a Time, 2, High Notes, by This Is Opera. Actually, sorry, it's a, <coughs> it's 3A. So, here it reads, in the last few videos, we heard how good head voice with core sounds. Now let's hear two more modern singers who have very little core in their head voice, very little chest voice coordination. Now let's see. Elena Garanka. So, uh, that small clip, it was alright, but just, I agree with this opera, that is not proper singing. So now here it, uh, reads, okay, we heard enough. It's extremely boring, ugly, small, weak sound. That's not her true voice. Let's listen to the second singer. It's the same small, weak sound. <clears throat> So, uh, that was Jesse Norman, and, uh, yeah, that one was also, uh, rather disappointing, just like the, um, Elena Garanka clip. So, um, now it reads, they think that their all vowel is clear. Well, yes, maybe it's clear, but only with a microphone. Their head voice doesn't have core. There's no meat in the sound. Let's listen again to that cordless head voice. <laughs> oh, Batman meme. Batman slaps Robin and says mosquito. I think I get it. No need to spoil the joke or anything, but in case if any of you need context, um <clears throat> This is opera calls any voice that they consider to be weak mosquitoes. Okay? And so, uh, yeah, um, <coughs> I don't agree with this opera that those clips were necessarily boring or ugly. I mean, like, uh, they were, they're at least listenable to me. I mean, they're just not, um, but they are disappointing, um, is. They are weak, though. 
the uh, and also uh, one thing that um, I do find rather um, annoying about El Elena Garanka is she does actually sing with the quite a bit of the time. <coughs> now it reads, um, now let's hear, hear real head voice in the middle. You know, um, I do find it interesting that um, this is opera complains about modern day opera singers not singing um, dark enough, but for me personally, the real <clears throat> the real problem is that um, they're over darkening these days, actually. You see, um, you hear those mezzos and those clips, um, Vera Davidova and, um, Aurora Boades. Um, both of them, how should I say this, um, They both had core in their voices, and also, um, and even though Aurora Broadas in the second clip, she did sing Woofy, it, it sounded like it was on purpose, which, uh, just to uh, achieve a stylistic effect, because, uh, she does, uh, alternate from dark to bright in that clip. Anyways, um, how, um, <coughs> and, uh, there are a lot of metals these days who, um, um, sing dark, but, like, in a way that's, like, overly dark, honestly. The idea that singers are singing too light and bright, I think it's the opposite. I think they're singing too dark, but also, of course, uh, they don't have, um, they do overly lighten their vocal weights, of course. Not their true vocal weight. But when it comes to, like, timbre, which is similar to vocal weight, but not quite, they actually over darken. It's like, um, singers should sing dark according to this is opera, and yet they celebrate Abba Stignani, as you can see later in this video. So now here it reads, um, <clears throat> because head voice of the modern singers is fake, their entire voice is fake. It's not their voice. That is the reason why modern singers, even when they try to do some correct things like lowering the jaw down vertically or singing skira at the top notes, they fail. When you don't have in, when you don't have core in the middle, you will not have it on the high notes either. Let's compare higher head voice notes. They put it in quotations. Head voice. Um. <coughs> Let's see, um, now, uh, now it says modern singer. Yes, I, uh, Elena Garancha, I mean, Garanka, or however you pronounce it, um, once again. 
again. Um, so I will say I, I do like her for the most part. I mean, she's not a bad singer. I think she's good overall. She just, but I'm not like the person who expects some um, singers to uh, be perfect, anyways. But she does. She does make a fake dark sound all the time without lots of clarity. Old singer. <coughs> Stignani. I like how Stignani, you know, did not over darken and she had clear vowels. She's actually uh, amongst operatic mezzo sopranos. I think she's my favorite. And I have made a video um, praising her, the great mezzo sopranos of opera, Ebe Stignani. Now, uh, now it reads um, <clears throat> there is a huge difference between these two singers. Modern singer sings with what people usually call operatic voice or operatic head voice. What is operatic about that? You really think that in spaces like these? Um, let's see what they voice shows up. Um, shows a big space with uh, lots of crowd and um, it looks like just like the picture. Uh, Talking about coloratura sopranos with um, Tetrazzini included, and uh, indeed, um, Tetrazzini's name is written somewhere, and uh, this must be one of her concerts. Now it shows um, a big group of people outside. Mosquito meme with Batman and Robin again. This is how you sing in big houses, unamplified. Three exclamation marks. Um. Or like this. You know, uh, if they were singing today, their uh, timbres would be considered that of a soprano because um, singers did not sing overly dark and back then. And, um, unfortunately, we do have some of a crisis of um, mezzos and contraltos sounding overly darkened and rather whiffy, you no know, throaty too much. <laughs> now it says, um, core in the voice should be present all the way to the top note. There should be no lightening of the sound. This is how lower female voices should sound above D5, for example. Um. Now let's hear that fa same phrase sung by a more modern singer. Jesse Norman. Okay. But Jesse Norman's a heavy soprano, right? But she does she did uh, sing mezzo soprano roles throughout her career. And um She did darken a lot, which uh, might imply that <coughs> she naturally had a brighter voice, perhaps. Um, 
Modern singer doesn't have enough core in the voice. These notes should be huge. Let's listen again to the old singer. One of the greatest mezzo-sopranos in the 20th century was Ebes Tignani. We are going to see, to hear in parentheses, why. First of all, she had developed chest voice. Let's hear. The first clip, uh, the low note sounded like it could be improved on, but at least it can carry across an orchestra. chest voice, she had a very clear chesty middle. Her recording of Omneris' judgment scene is a vocal masterclass, especially the first page of that scene, let's see why. Hmm. Okay, uh, <clears throat> now, it's, uh, now it shows, um, a diagram with uh, some sheet music it says um, even if mezzo soprano slash contralto has chest voice in first phrase, second phrase, El Kilo Salva tells us a lot about the singer's coordination of registers. Usually, those notes around B4 are aspirated without chord to falsettish. Not with D Stignani. Let's hear and pay attention. Let's listen and pay attention how rich, clear, and dark her voice sounds in the first phrase and how in second middle voice, her phrase, her voice still has, still have core and that chesty quality. Hardest vowel in the middle, female voice, is usually ah. Hmm. Interesting, as a male singer, my easiest vowel, at least in my middle and low range, is an ah. Of course, in the high notes, it starts to get harder, but for the most part, um, ah is one of my favorite um, vowels, actually. Stignani's ah was very clear, not empty, clear like Garanka's or Norman's, or Norman's, sorry, about the quick uh, mistake, but clear with core, with meat in the sound.
bullets here. Since her voice was very developed, she could darken a vowel without losing core clarity. In next example, pay attention how at one point she sings a really dark on note before, and then she goes even darker in chest voice. That shows amazing development of the voice and amazing acting with it. Have you heard it? That phrase around before is sung really dark without losing choral. Let's listen again. Indeed, um, to sound dark while also having core is something that, um, is largely something that you're born with. You know what I mean? And, um, Stignani um, sounds dark in her low range, but in her mid and high range, when you hear her sing, she um, she is actually very bright. Which um. What's more important than uh, having lots of skiro, I think, is to uh, have clear vowels that are uh, eligible to the ear and to um, sing across an entire orchestra. Because yeah, um, sometimes having a dark tone actually is an overrated feature of a voice. What's amazing about Ebe Signani is that she kept that core all the way to the top. She had an amazing voice. I agree. By amazing chest voice. Oh, they said amazing chest voice, which I also agree with that. By amazing chest voice, we are thinking of her complete voice because chest voice was coordinated into her sound from bottom to top in a huge degree. Not one modern mezzo has them out of core. Unfortunately, um, yeah, um, I can't really hear any uh, mezzos today who sing as good as she does. <clears throat> um, let's see what they have next. Listen, listen to her amazing head voice, which has so much core from, let's say, before. C sharp five, D five, and E five. Okay, 
Okay, so uh, what just showed up was uh, texting F5. It's uh pausing for some reason. Um What's going on here? Let me use my phone's hotspot for now. See if that works. I remember we were on 1009. <laughs> I just skipped some of it because, um, why not? That is good for a mezzo, actually. I thought she had a C6, didn't she? Anyways, um... <clears throat> I do think that this is opera did exaggerate how much of a crisis we really do have because, um... It showed Elena Garanka with a microphone as if though she could only, like... Seeing that, and also like a quick clip of her singing very quietly without one. And um, she can sing bigger than that without a microphone. It's like... To say that the only reason why she um, is able to sing across an orchestra is because she uses a microphone. It's like... That is incorrect. Okay. And also, um, yeah, I do, uh, I do like the, um, Stignani part of the video. Um, it really did make, uh, it funner to watch. Because I'm a big Stignani fan. Anyways, um, have a good day, everybody.